and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to part two of my making of a journal series thank you for all the lovely comments and feedback on part one it's really encouraging to know that so many of you uh, are going to be doing this project alongside me this year it, it, it really does make it worthwhile and it's, it's nice to know that this is something that you've been wanting to see so last week in part one um we looked at the paper for the pages of our book and there was a little tea staining tutorial for you i'll link to that video up in the corner um, and there will be a it's all in a playlist and, and i'll link to it in the description below at the end if i think about it um today we're going to look at embellishing our pages and this is the book that i made last year just for myself and I decorated um, some of the pages. I, I haven't overly embellished it. I wanted to leave it plain to sort of keep my options open in many ways. But there are some things that are easier to do before we bind the book. Um, there are plenty of things that you can do once it's put together. Don't feel that you need to, to go overboard on the pages now. But just certain things are going to be easier to do while we have loose paper. And for example, anything that requires stitching, it's going to be easier to sew onto the edge of a loose piece of paper than to try and manoeuvre a book um, into your sewing machine. So some of my pages have got this uh, like a lace trim on the edge on bits of fabric on the edge like so. Um, there are little word quotes like this that I have stitched onto a piece of fabric and attached onto the page. And again, much easier to do that before this book is bound together. I'm also going to be doing a little bit of stamping. Um, you know, some of these pages had, had got stamped images or some words and things like that stamped on. And yes, you can stamp on the pages once it's bound. Um, I, I've stamped this once it was bound, but you don't always get a very good impression because this is a little bit lumpy bumpy. And if you want a clear impression, especially if you were stamping some words, it might be easier to do that before you bind the book together. Um, here I've got some just some contrasting paper stitched along the side. And again, easier to do that before we attach it all together. Um, maybe, I don't think I've actually got any stitched tuck spots in this one. But say, for example, you wanted to make a little pocket and stitch something on there, a piece of contrasting paper, that again would be easier to do before we bind it together. So there are lots of things that we need to do really before we start assembling the book. And some of the things that I'll show you today, yes, you can quite happily leave it until it's assembled, but it's just worth thinking about it um, at this point as to what sort of decorations are you gonna to want to put on your pages? So, as you saw there, I've got some lace trim and fabric trim. And here is a lot that I've got left over from that original project. And a lot of this was originally white. Um, most laces and trims that you buy, you know, are white. Yes, you can buy them in ivory tones, but a lot of them are just white and they're a very, very stark white. So in order to get this color, we're going to do, we can just tea stain them in the way really that we tea stained um, the papers last week. So here I've got, I've got my jug with a few tea bags in, some boiling water. And all you need to do is pop in your trims. So there's some seam binding and some different lace trims in there. Just submerge them and leave those for a few hours really. The longer you leave it, the deeper the color is going to be. Natural fibers, sort of the cotton crochet trims will take the color more readily than the, the sort of the thinner nylon polyester laces, but they will all color up. And you can just leave that, as I say, for a few hours, leave it overnight if you want to. And then when you come to, when you think right, they're the color that I want them to be, take them out of that water, rinse them through with some clean water and then just put them aside to dry. So I'm just going to stock up a bit. I've got some here already, but I'm going to stock up with a few more. So those I'm going to put to one side and they'll be ready in a few hours time for me to rinse out. 
but taking a look at the ones I've already got here this things like this is a cotton broderie anglaise trim I have cotton crochet lace this is like a fine crocheted lace I'm not entirely sure whether this is a cotton or a man-made fiber this is just this is like a man-made um, a polyester lace I've also got um, things like this, the more fancy embroidered trim. Again, this was white when it was started and I've stained it. Some more Brodre Anglais. Um, some wide embroidered lace. And then I've even got some heavier weight things that uh, were more for when I was thinking about the cover could do with a little press with an iron but this is like a cotton fringed trim and I've got things like this which is a it's a ribbon rose trim but it's to me this is a little bit bulky to go on a page but would be lovely on the cover um, also in here I have some little samples of linen actually these were some free samples from a company you know you were allowed to request and these are great um, this is what I've used for mounting the little quote words on and stitching on the page but I'm sure if you've got just some natural fibers somewhere absolutely perfect so we'll move these just to one side and have a little look what else I've brought out as a suggestion for decorating my pages now, as I mentioned earlier, we can do some stamping. Now, some of this, I say, could be done now, could be done later, but have a little think. If you've got a selection of rubber stamps and there's maybe something you want to use, have a little think about what you've got. I mean, obviously, there are things like these, which are sort of like little random ink splats, dots. It would be quite nice just for aging those pages a little bit further. Stamps with some nice quotes on have a few sets of these but it's always nice maybe just to stamp a couple of words in the corner so something like that would be good more sort of random backgrounds here I've got um, some like numbers and this calculus equation again just quite nice just for adding a little bit of detail to make it almost look like it, it was printed on on the paper originally Again, if we're looking at a vintage theme, something with vintage imagery here. I've got um, the pocket watches and old typewriters, pointing fingers, always a popular one, light bulbs, that type of thing. Here, this set here, again, has got this really nice big script stamp. Um, do like that for adding a bit of detail to the background. And again, here, this sort of thing with some vintage script or imagery some nice vintage um, imagery here again those paper artsy stamps and then this was a set of wooden stamps I've had for a long long time which are sort of postage themes so sort of postmarks and some words again would be quite nice just to stamp on just for a bit of added detail and a bit of vintage feel so not going to use all of them um, may only use a couple but it's always worthwhile just sorting a little pile of possibly you know possibilities as I like to think of it uh, as well as stamps we could always add some stickers some ephemera if you don't have word stamps there's always things like this these are the Tim Holtz um, clippings stickers I like these because the colors are perfect and I like the assortment of, of fonts that are used and just little phrases that they're very useful and they're nice if you don't have these you can make your own here I, I made some a while ago I just cut out some little phrases from book pages and I've just stuck them um, with some repositionable adhesive onto a piece of card just so I don't lose them but easy to do and just to depict some words that you quite like you'll be able to find printable quotes I mean, you could either literally just type some onto some um, tea stained paper, type them on your computer, print them out onto tea stained paper. Here were some quotes. These were from Nick the Booksmith. They're free to use. I think they're on her Flickr account. If I think on, I'll try and um, link below, but I'm sure 
most of you who are looking to make a journal have probably come across Nick the Booksmith's um, YouTube channel. She's excellent at, at lots of good ideas and she has quite a few things that you can print out and use in your own books. So those are just printed onto tea stain paper. The ideology range has a lot of vintage um, things that you could use, packs of like vintage ephemera like this. There's some little tags and labels and cards, always useful for popping into your book. Um, I used some of these stickers in my last journal. They have some little page tabs here or just, just little um, highlight arrows. I've also pulled out some washi tape um, with sort of vintage style got some cardboard tags that I may or may not use, some glassine envelopes. These were sent to me in Happy Mail with um, some with things in and I saved the envelopes. I thought they might be quite nice to add onto a page. Also in Happy Mail, I was sent these little vintage um, envelopes. Again, something that I might well consider putting onto my pages. I've got odds and ends here, slide mounts, foreign postage stamps, these are some die cut tabs. This is a little Sizzix die that I've got um, that creates a tab for the edge of a page. May or may not use those, but I've popped them in the book. An old book plate, some scraps of scrapbooking paper. This was an off cut off a piece of a manuscript paper that I've got, but I just liked the colour of the paper and thought maybe if I wanted to stamp a word onto it, it would be perfect. I wouldn't need to age it or anything so I've just hung on to that. There's things like vintage tickets, foreign book text and a bit more scrapbooking paper there and this is a vintage postcard so I've just popped all those things into a box in case I want to use them and I say a lot of those can wait until the book's assembled but they're all together there if I need them. Um, this here is also a set of stickers. This is uh, Kaiser Craft. They're a little bit bigger, but these um, some of these word stickers might be quite nice. A bit of vintage imagery on there. So I've just pulled that out because it's sort of the right colours. And then some bits, a bit more sort of scrapbooking paper, um, some six by six paper, and then some off cuts from some larger um, pieces. Again, they're probably going to be Kaiser Craft or Graphic 45, also good for that type of paper. Some handmade paper, thought that might uh, be useful, just with some cream and black prints. And then I've got some vellum, because I want to pop some vellum pages into this book. In my box here, so we've looked at the quotes. We talked a little bit about printables last time. And um, these were some things that were printed onto tea stain paper that I didn't use when I made my last journal. So I've just gathered them together today. And then some vintage um, book pages. This is the index out of an atlas. And then I've got some old manuscript paper here, um, some various sizes, just because it Music paper is lovely and I, I just I like the colour, the ageing on it. So I'll pop some of that in. And then this was my big box of tea stained papers. A little bit more uh, scrapbook paper there that has been missed out the pile. So I've got lots to go at here. The vast majority is going to be these papers and a few um, vintage manuscript and book pages. And then we will have a little look at embellishing some of them. So I'm going to clear myself a space and we'll have a little think how we're going to arrange the pages. So when we organise our pages, we are going to form them into what is called signatures, for those of you who are not familiar with the term. And a signature is each bundle of folded papers. So if you can see here on this book here, that there is is one signature and that's like a bundle of pages stitched into the binding and then there's the next one and there's the next one so i have four four signatures in this original journal now you can choose to make as many signatures as you want 
I don't like to have too many um, pages in each individual signature. It starts to stress the binding a little bit, I think. Um, but whatever you do, however many you choose to have, you want an even number of pages in each of your signatures. So they don't have to be exactly the same, but within a couple of pages. So I have divided my tea stained papers into four piles. I'm going to do four signatures again. And in this case, I have 16 pieces of paper in each of my piles. And then when they get folded in half, that's going to become one signature. I do, however, want to mix in a few other types of pages. So I'm going to pop some of this music score in. So I'm just tearing that down the fold that's already there. And I'm going to pop that in that way round um, so that it folds. I'm not bothered that the it's going to be sideways on. That doesn't matter to me at all. And I don't mind that the page is slightly smaller. I don't want anything any larger than my tea stained papers. That's that's the size that I want my book to be. So if anything that I use is going to be any taller than that, I will trim it down. So I've got four sets of papers and I'm going to put one of these to each set. And we'll sort out the order that the pages are going in in a minute. But I'm just going to, for the now, just try and keep each of my piles of paper of an even number of papers, if that makes sense. I feel like I'm rambling, but it, in my mind it makes perfect sense. I also want to use some of these index pages that I had from an old atlas. And I'm looking at the size of these. And they are slightly wider, so I'm just going to trim a little bit off one of the edges just to make them so that they're not actually any wider than my tea stained papers because I don't want my book to become any larger than that so I'm just going to take that to my guillotine and trim the edge off so there I've just taken sort of quarter of an inch off and now it's the same size as my paper and again I'm going to pop one of those in each of my signatures so I'm just going to add one to each of my little sets of papers that I've got. I've also got some larger music score, which I would like to use. And once again, this is going to have to be trimmed down. So if I just measure it against my tea stain paper I need to take about half an inch off the the width of my page as it well the height of the page as it would have been in the book and I need to take about an inch off there just to make it smaller so again just going to it's a shame I lose some of this um, aging around the edges but it can't be helped I just I genuinely do not want my pages to be any bigger than um, they are so I'm just going to trim those. So here's my trimmed down larger music score. And again, just popping a piece of that into each pile. And I have a few of these um, printable vintage pages that I'd printed onto tea stain paper previously. And I'm just going to spread those about as well. So we'll have uh, we'll have one in there, one in there, one in there, and one in there, and then I've got these um, these two, which will just go in a couple of piles of what as well. And then finally, um, my vellum. And I want a couple of sheets of this in each signature. I want one on the outside and one somewhere in the middle. So I'm going to pop a couple of sheets into each pile. And 
and I can pop the others away for another project. So before we start stitching um, embellishments on, it's worthwhile just having a little think about how you want these pages arranged. I know this is a lot of talking and before we get on to actually doing anything, but it is worth taking the time to have a little think about what we want to do. So I'm going to just move those to one side. So I know that I want a piece of vellum on the outside of my signature. So I'm popping that piece of vellum down. So then I'm going to have a couple of plain pages. doesn't matter here. You see, I've got one here that ripped when it was wet. I don't mind about that. Then I think I want a piece of music score in there. couple more plain pages. I think we'll have this printable page in next. I'm putting it that way so that as I'm opening it I see the printed side because it's only printed on one side. We'll have a couple more plain pages and we'll have that index. couple more plain pages and maybe our second sheet of vellum. Some more plain pages and we'll have this uh, printed letter and again popping it in that way so that we see it as we're opening the book that way. And then way shall we have this let's have this way so that we see that side first and then the music score and that's our final page so that is how one of the signatures is going to look as we flip through a bit of a mixture as we go through which is nice so you can go ahead and organise each of your signatures. I'm just going to work on this one for now and then I can do the others later. So I'll just move these out of my way. And now that we've sort of got a rough idea of how this first section of our book's going to look, we can decide where do we want to do some stitching. So it might help you to put a clip if you just want to have a little think about what you're doing. So we could clip these pages together. And then they won't move about so much. Now I'm not bothered too much about decorating the pattern pieces, so I'm going to concentrate on the plain ones. And I think I, I want some lace trim on here. So I think I'm going to have some there. I'm going to flip through half a dozen pages and have some more and continue in that vein. So I'm going to get the sewing machine out and stitch a little bit of lace on and I will show you how it looks at that point. So here's my lace trim stitched in place. And I'd say I've just flipped a few pages each time and mainly using a, a zigzag stitch. I did use a straight stitch on, on this one here but the vast majority of them have just used um, a zigzag stitch. I've stitched just some um, ribbon trim along the edges of my pages. The next thing I want to stitch in are a couple of pockets and tuck spots. And for this, I'll just show for an example on here. I've just got some bits of scrapbook paper and a bit of handmade paper here. And I've made sure that it's the width of my page. So, for example, here I'd stitch around those three edges and that'll just create a little pocket to pop something in. 
I'm also going to add a couple of little pieces down the side like so and I can just stitch down there and along the bottom and again just gives you a place just to tuck something if you want to and so uh, you could also pop them on the left hand side here just stitch down the side here and again gives you something to tuck into but just adds a little bit extra in interest to your page something i do get asked a lot is um when using a sewing machine do i use anything special no this is just this is my regular sewing machine it's a single sewing machine nothing too fancy i will just say i just use an old needle if i'm going to stitch fabric i put a new needle in because obviously paper blunts the needle um quite readily but other than that just sort of um normal sewing thread i mean i'm using it's actually a, a I don't know if you can see here, it's like a variegated colour thread. This is a, a Mettler um, embroidery thread and it has a sort of range of um, neutral tones. It just fades from a light to a darker brown. If you don't have that, just choose something that coordinates um, with the pages that you're using or use black if you want the stitching to stand out. I also don't bother to trim my ends too much either. I'll leave an inch or so on the end because I think it just looks okay. It looks nice. Just adds to that sort of frayed um, effect that we're going for. So I'm going to add in a couple of tuck spots next onto some of my pages here and, and then I'll be right back again. So I've stitched in some little pockets we've got one there at the bottom I have a little tuck spot on the corner there another one on the bottom here these just made out of scrap boot paper um, one on the inside of that page there that's just a little bit of scrap boot paper stitched to the top of some handmade paper and another one there made from some scrap boot paper. I've also cut out a couple of these little printed quotes and just stitched with a straight stitch onto pieces of linen. And I'm going to attach those just onto a couple of random pages. And then that will be it for the stitching for this signature. So I'll just do these and then I can pop my sewing machine away for now. So I stitched in my couple of quotes um, just at the top of a page. I pop one there and I think we have one towards the back of this signature there. Just stitched it in with a zigzag stitch. And I'm going to do a little bit of stamping next. Just again, simply because it's a little bit easier to do it um, while you can stamp on individual pages. But by all means, if you want to, to leave that until it's bound, you can do. Just bear in mind, you may not get such good results. You can use any kind of ink for stamping. I do prefer to use archival ink because it's permanent once it's dry. And if you happen to be doing anything with any perhaps watercolour or anything like that, I don't want what I've stamped on here to run and, and it's not going to happen with the archival. I've got a black, I've got a sepia, I've got a watering can grey. I think I'm going to stamp in the grey. I used black in my previous journal and it's a little bit harsh and although I do like the sepia, I, I, don't, I don't want too much brown. There is obviously black on the printing of the you know the printed pages that are in here and I think I'm going to go for this dark grey it's just a slightly softer tone than using black and I'm having a little look at through what I've got trying to, to decide and I think I'm going to start off with some of these more background type things um before I go for any more quotes or anything like that. So just um, having a look at what I've got. I do quite like this script here. Um, I quite often like if I'm using a script stamp, I don't actually want to be able to read whatever it says. And this one you can't, so I like th that fact. Now you can use these on a block if you want a, a full impression of the whole stamp or you can use your fingers if you want a little bit more random um, effect with the way that you stamp 
So decide what pages or page you want to stamp on. So I'm just going to have a little look and think, where do I want some stamping? I want some stamping on this page here. So I'm just going to separate that ink up my stamp and sort of press it down with a bit of a rolling um, motion and that way you get a patchy sort of partial stamping which is a little less harsh than stamping the full image. So I'm just going to take it across here a bit as well. I don't mind that it comes on this page. It's just adding a little bit of um, extra interest to the background. So I'm happy with that for that page there. I'm going to pop that back in its place. I want to use this stamp again. So I'm just going to sift through my pages, just keeping my pages in the same basic order that I want them to be in. And I'm going to stamp on this side um, this time. And again, just using that bit of a rolling motion. And this technique works well for any sort of background design. So I'll just clean my stamp off, just stamp the excess off onto a paper towel and pop it back into the packet so I don't lose it. And I'm going to use this little um, dotted stamp, I quite like this one. This time I'm quite happy to pop this on a block because it's quite a random um, design anyway. And again, have a little think, where do I want to put some of this? just stamping some little dots randomly over the page. So I'm going to continue to do this with some background um, designs and then I'll consider stamping some words afterwards. So I'll be right back when I've done that. So I've got some dots stamped. I have um, some of that first script that we use stamped, some of the, a, a different script and really every few pages that you flip through you'll come across some more stamping so it's sort of evenly spaced throughout the, the book um, so that's that stage done next I think I'll stamp some sentiments just because I've got lots of these little word stamps so I'm just going to choose a few of these and, and pop them on and then I think I'll add in some of our um, the little word stickers, either some of the ones that I've cut myself from book pages or these little clipping stickers, the Tim Holtz ones. So with the words, obviously I'm going to pop these onto a block. I want a, a, a crisp image of the words that I'm stamping here. If, if you're going to stamp a quote, you want that to be readable. And I'm just going to choose various places. Again, I'm going to stamp in this grey. I like the grey. And just inking up my stamp. Position it on my page. And pressing down. And just to stamp in a quote. So I'm going to do a few of those. 
and as I say I will stick a few word stickers on as well and I'll show you what it looks like when I've done that. So this is essentially um, my first signature pretty much completed. Let me just sort of see if I can zoom in a bit on this. So obviously it's not stitched together, it's not attached, but I've added some little stickers. We've got stamping, another sticker, some more stamping, more stickers. Um, we've got the embroidered lace, we've got the tuck spots, some quote out of a book, printed paper, a little piece of fabric and a quote. And really what you're looking for is a little bit of interest on most pages or evenly spaced out so you don't have many plank pages all together. There's a little bit of something to look at on most of the pages. A little book quote up there. Some stamping and a sticker. We've got our music score, another little book quote, stamping, stitching. And as you can see, I haven't gone overboard. I haven't actually used any of the vintage images, the pictures. Um, a larger sticker there from that scrapbooking set that I showed you at the beginning. Another little tuck spot. And really, this is as much, another little sticker down there, some stamping. This is as much as I think I'm going to want. Now, obviously, this is your book that you're making. If you want lots of stamped imagery, you go ahead and cover your pages. If you want to use um, a lot of printable images on there, you go ahead and do that. As I say, this is just sort of showing you more sort of the order that makes sense to do things so regardless of how embellished your book's going to be you're going to be following the same sort of procedure um, that I've done here and that's my first of four signatures the other thing I want to mention is obviously as you fold your pages the ones on the outside have further to travel than the ones on the inside so the edges of your pages are not even now I'm not bothered about that I've got bits of lace and things stitched on the edge which adds to the unevenness of it if that is a real issue for you then before you stitch anything on the edge you would need to trim those so they're all level but I think it just adds to the effect in this sort of vintage journal I didn't trim my pages in my last one they're all sort of rather uneven at the edge there but it doesn't matter. The cover extends beyond all of the pages, so it doesn't show. So I'm leaving mine as they are. Let's say I've completed, um, this is the first of my four signatures. I need to complete the other three before I come back to you next time. Uh, and in part three, we're going to have a look at creating the cover. So once again, I hope you found this useful. I hope you enjoyed it and are looking forward to the next part. But for now, that's all. Bye.